Embark on a journey of the unexplained with Paranormal M. Our channel is dedicated to unraveling the mysteries that surround us. Subscribe and tap the notification bell to be part of our growing community and discover the hidden truths of the paranormal. When I was younger, I lived in a fraternity house that everyone accepted as being haunted due to a lot of weird occurrences that, as the story goes, all started when one of the members OD'd on coke in the late 70s and early 80s. There was even a plaque for him on the first floor. Everyone ended up having their own stories of what happened to them. Usually small stuff that wasn't really malicious in any way, just more of a, hey, look at me type of thing. But the weirdest by far was that every single person that slept in the same room that guy allegedly died in very quickly developed sleep paralysis and would wake up feeling like someone was pinning them down to the bed. I had a few very minor experiences, like things moving or paper towel dispensers going off on their own, but the most concrete for me was when I was walking down to the basement one day in the summer when hardly anyone was in the house. As I was going down the stairs, I saw the shadow of a figure move into the boiler room and the door swung behind it. I thought it was a bit odd, mainly because I was one of the only people there at the time and the light in the boiler room was turned off, so I was a bit confused as to how a shadow could have been projected. I went into the boiler room and flipped on the lights, but there was nothing there. I searched that room top to bottom and couldn't find any evidence that someone was in there. I never used to believe in ghosts. I would joke around with friends and tell spooky stories to get them riled up, but never a believer. I became a care worker. I would work night shifts and sleepover shifts, where you're supposed to sleep. And that's where it all changed. One night in a two-story home for six older adults, I heard footsteps downstairs while I was upstairs in the staff bed, attempting to sleep. I heard attempts at opening the kitchen doorknob ever so slightly. The old metal screeching. We locked the doors so as to prevent the dementia resident from accessing the kitchen at night for safety reasons. I'm thinking it's her, confused, wandering downstairs. I get out of bed, head to the stairwell, and look down toward the kitchen door. I don't see anyone. I think possibly she's trying to get back to her room, so I head down and go towards the back of the house. Nothing. No one. I peek into each resident's room, all sound asleep. The residents didn't move very fast due to age, so it would be difficult for them to make it to their room before I would see them. I head back to my room upstairs, confused about the situation, placed it down to being an older house making noises. I get back upstairs, laid into bed, and rested my head on the pillow. All of a sudden, I hear thunderous sprinting up and down the hallway. It sounded heavy and angry. It ran up the hallway and back down. Then silence. I was so terrified, I laid silent in bed and cried. I was not the only staff who experienced incidents in that house. Same job, different house. I worked with kids, night shift. I'm at the kitchen table killing some time when I hear a toy go off in the playroom. I think nothing of it. It'll turn off eventually. It keeps going and going. The house is silent, but for this toy. I walk towards the playroom. Right as I reach the door handle, the noise stops. Cuts off abruptly. Silence. Weird coincidence, I think nothing more, and I go back to the kitchen. My butts touch the chair for less than a second and the toy begins again. I again think it will shut off itself, but it persists. I go to the door, it stops. It's just a fluke, I tell myself. This stupid toy duck with its stupid quacks wouldn't scare me. I'm an adult. I confidently walk back into the kitchen amidst the silence and go to sit. The quacking resumes. 
Okay, enough of this. In a confident anger at the toy, I embraced the playroom with no fear, rummaging for the duck toy that was causing so much annoyance. Alas, I found him. Turned him to see where his on and off switch was located. As I rotate the duck, I notice underneath the battery compartment. There are no batteries in this duck. He shouldn't even be working. Commence freak out. Toss duck into the corner, pull door closed and locked it. Vowed to not go in the rest of the night. There were no more duck sounds. That house also had other stories. I have two incidents that both took place in my boyfriend's parents' house. When we started dating, he still lived with his parents, since we were just out of high school. The first incident took place when I accidentally fell asleep in his bed one night. I woke up at 3 a.m. and decided to walk home. At this point, it was me, him, his sister, and parents at home. All the bedrooms on one side of the house and the kitchen slash office in across the hallway. So I'm at the door trying to find my coat when I hear something rustle in the kitchen. It sounded like someone threw some cutlery on the floor. I assumed it was his father coming from his office and peeked into the kitchen. No one was there and the office was dark. So his father wasn't there. I got kind of spooked but continued to put on my jacket. Before I got the chance to put on my shoes, it sounded like someone threw some plates at the ground. I literally heard them shatter. The only thing that went through my mind was, nope, and I ran home without shoes. I talked to my boyfriend's mom about it a few weeks later and nothing had been out of place or broken. The second incident took place a few months after. Everyone in the house, same people as the last story, including his sister's boyfriend, was asleep when me and my boyfriend woke up hearing the big mirror in the hallway fall and shatter. It was really loud, so we got worried and opened our door to go see the damage. Well, we found no damage at all. The mirror was intact, still on the wall. The only thing in the hallway was everyone else from the house looking perplexed. They had also heard it. We never figured out what it was that made that sound. It wasn't something happening outside since no neighbors had heard anything at all. Still creeps me out. And oh, the locked door would open by itself from time to time. There were other incidents as well that I really can't explain. We would very frequently have a sense of anxiety and foreboding in the house, which on its own isn't paranormal, but certainly made it a very uneasy stay being there. I read somewhere that radon exposure can cause anxiety, and the house did have radon problems, so maybe that could have been it. But I also would hear footsteps around the house when I was the only one there, and just constantly felt like someone was watching me. My dad got the worst of it and claimed he would hear sounds coming from the basement at night. His bedroom was right near it, whereas mine was upstairs. So I never heard any of it, but I'm an extremely deep sleeper. Then the traditional slams, bangs, and crashes throughout the house. My dad also claimed that he would hear knocking on the cellar door. Sometimes he would hear a woman screaming. Supposedly every family who had ever lived there experienced something. There are three distinct things that stand out. The night before we moved out, my dad claims he woke up because he felt a sudden hard tapping on his head. My brother's girlfriend was staying over and my dad and me were gone. We came back to find that his girlfriend's daughter was terrified because she saw a shadow in the corner of the room. I chalked it up to a kid's imagination running wild. One time my dad was practicing with his band in the basement and was expecting me to be back from a Christmas party. 
he claims he heard heavy footsteps from upstairs and thought it was me. So he went upstairs to greet me, and no one was home. I got home about half an hour later. It got to the point where my dad had the house blessed, and the priest claims to have been terrified and refused to go into the house at first. This was around the time I was becoming an atheist, so I didn't really believe in any of that. But I definitely experienced the uneasiness and occasional random noises, but never experienced any of the screaming or knocking my dad claims to have heard. At one point, we had some people from TAPS associated with, but not on the Ghost Hunters show, visit us and do a sweep of the house. We got some of the obvious quote-unquote orb pictures, which both me and my brother thought were kind of dumb as hell, but at one point, being a bit of an edgelord, thinking I had psychic powers, told them to take pictures in one specific spot. The results was an image of what appeared to be a ghost, of a person with a demented face. We tried to explain it as a reflection from the washing machine, but it looked too much like a person. My husband and I own a martial arts school, and the building that it's in, which we also own, is about 130 years old, next to a church. And I never, and still don't really, there's been another explanation, believe in the paranormal, but the things that happened in it didn't just happen to me. It was a decrepit, which is why it was so cheap to purchase, and we basically did all the work ourselves, old, creaky, and drafty. Still knob and tube that we had to get an electrician to change out. So here's a bunch of things that happened. When we'd be working with like drills and electric saws, I hear the tinkling of a music box and I stop everyone to ask if they hear it too. No one else did, so I assumed it must have been some music from the church coming through. My husband would often hear a woman's voice calling his name from the bottom of the stairs. It's two floors, a basement, and a loft, and thinking it was me back from work, would always ask for it to come up. Turns out the building was empty. Happened four or five times. One night, there's a small apartment on the second floor connected to a large hall. We woke up hearing what sounded like a broom sweeping across the wooden floor in the large hall. My husband got up to go check, but once he would walk in there, the sweeping sound would stop. It happened three more times that night. We chalked it up to mice or squirrels. And we did find mummified squirrels in the attic once. We had a barbecue in the backyard, and I needed to go get some utensils. There's a metal stairwell from the backyard up to the second floor, and then there's the main entrance staircase opposite to that. I came up the main entrance and heard footsteps pacing back and forth across the far end of the hall and thought my husband came up from the metal stairwell to get utensils with me. It was dark and I couldn't see anything. I called out for him and the pacing stopped. No response and then the pacing footsteps continued. Annoyed I thought that he was just messing with me so I flipped on the lights and all the utensils from the shelf where I heard the pacing crashed down to the floor like I spooked something but there wasn't anything not even a rat like I thought there might be one Saturday morning my husband was on his computer in another room I'm at the apartment playing with the Tamagotchi app on my iPad when I heard the stereo sitting in front of me click on and a girl's voice started talking from it I thought he controlled the stereo from his computer, so I ignored it because he often pulls music to work out before class started. He teaches the morning class. I do remember thinking, what kind of weird-ass indie music is he listening to anyway? Because the voice just said, hi, my name is... thought I heard Katie, but I'm not 100% sure because I wasn't paying attention. I've never known a Katie in my life. I am blank years old, and I'm from blank... 
I didn't catch the specifics because I wasn't really listening, but that went on for about two or three minutes until it suddenly went, something's hurting me. And when I caught that, I looked up and squinted at the stereo like, what? Something's killing me. Something killed me. At this point, the hair is standing on the back of my neck and I'm getting up from the couch to take a closer look. Please, someone tell my parents. Tell the teachers. Tell the corrections officer. At the word corrections officer, I just bolted into the other room and started yelling at my husband and cursing him out because I was certain that he was playing a trick on me. I told him, we don't fucking play jokes about dead people. And he's, of course, looking at me like, what the fuck? When he finally calms me down to get what I heard out of me and what I was accusing him of, he told me it was impossible and led me into the stereo. It's not plugged in. Thought maybe the stereo picked up on the signals from the ebook or something. After that last fiasco, I went to ask my live-in student who lived with his girlfriend in the basement if anything weird was happening. They shot each other an alarmed look and told me this. His girlfriend was sleeping one night when he was working overnight, and she heard footsteps come down from the stairs and their door open and then close. All of a sudden, a bright flashlight shines in her face, and she just kind of can make out a silhouette of who she thought was her boyfriend, because he's tall, and she can see the dirty jeans that he's wearing. She's annoyed thinking he's messing with her, so she's swatting up at him, telling him to stop. Finally, she gets so pissed that she rolls and turns on their lamp and there's no one there. They sometimes hear footsteps on the first floor when there's no one in the building. They had a pet mouse at the time, and whenever that happened, it would just start doing backflips in its tank. However, when class is going on and there's people in the building, the mouse didn't care and just went about his mousy business. They were play wrestling one day when suddenly their African gray parrot ruffled its feathers and in a really alarmed voice asked, Who's there? Who's there? <laughs> they thought it was funny at first, so our student looked at the bird and pointed to the door and said, You mean over there? And ran toward the door to open it. As he did, all the books that were lining the shelf on the way to the door fell over in front of him, and the lights started flickering. The bird and the mouse both got spooked and were throwing themselves against their cages. Our second live-in student after the first, the first one got married to his girlfriend, got their own home and had a baby. Several times, could not find his phone, and he woke up in the morning where he had placed it next to his bed the night before. He would search his room high and low, and then he'd find it perfectly placed right outside his locked bedroom door on the floor. I thought he might have sleepwalked, but his girlfriend says that she realized that he, if he did, he was a really light sleeper, so don't know about that. Nothing notable has happened since then, but we've also had just anyone stay there overnight in years. Cicadas are outside. Be right back. I lived in a house that seemed to be haunted by doppelgangers. Every event that happened never involved some mysterious figure but a known person being in the place where they shouldn't have been. Here's a few examples. I was a teenager at the time, and I was instant messaging my girlfriend at that same time with my webcam turned on. I had the viewer up so I could see myself in the webcam, and behind me there was the stairs leading up, left of my camera view, and the entrance to the living room, right of the camera view, my younger sister would typically fall asleep every night on the couch in front of the TV and make her way up to bed in the middle of the night. At one point in my webcam view, I saw my sister leaving the room and went to go upstairs. The thing that struck me as odd was that I didn't hear anything. 
It was an older Victorian house, so the wooden floor and stairs were loud as fuck. Without saying anything to my girlfriend, I got up and looked into the living room, and there was my sister passed out on the couch. I sat back down and asked my girlfriend if she had seen anything in the camera. She said, yeah, I just saw your sister go upstairs. My family was all getting ready to go somewhere. I was sitting in the car with my mom, and we were all waiting on my sister, who was still in the house. After a bit, she comes out and gets into the car, and just looks at me like, what the fuck? I ask her what's wrong, and she says that just before she walked out of the house, she thought I was still inside, so she yelled up the stairs. Obviously, we're leaving, and apparently, I yell back. Okay, I'll be down in a minute. Is it possible a ghost lives in my house, or am I just paranoid? I live in a pretty old house made in the 60s. Apparently, the owner built her whole neighborhood. It's gone through a few owners before us. The one before us, a nice elderly couple. My guess is it's the dude who first built the place. I think he passed and still loves the house so he just wanders it whenever. I'm fine with the dude. I'm guessing he's just trying to kind of get a kick out of me crying and running off to my mom when I hear him messing around in the kitchen or the living room. Things will fall. Just minutes ago, something in my room fell randomly while I was out, scrapping the wall with it. I think he means scraping. Scraping the wall with it, and I can't seem to find whatever it was. Lights will flicker randomly. Random noises, such as the light being switched on, will ring out in the dead of night. My LED lights flashed white when they weren't on, and loud noise was made. Noises go on throughout my house. Anything from creaks to things falling in other rooms. Sometimes I'll be sitting in my room when things like a bag of markers, placed on even ground, such as my desks, Will fall without warning. Sometimes my door will close and open slowly without me doing anything, like a soft gust opened it. Sometimes I'll hear soft footsteps and think it's my cat, when there's nothing. I'll go into the living room only for noises such as a single hit on a pongo drum, not even faint, just right there barely out of sight. I don't know what the old man wants. I guess he's bored not interacting and watching me stare at my phone all day. That, or it's my family. But I'm not very close to anyone that's passed within it. Perhaps it's my great-grandparents watching over me, making sure we're safe. Or I'm hella paranoid and none of this means anything and can be explained in simple terms. I'd like feedback to prove me wrong and tell me it's just my anxiety so I can stop overthinking this stuff. I'm not a big ghost believer, but this just seems like too much of a coincidence. Especially my stuff being moved around when I know for a fact I haven't touched any of it. Cursed land, haunted forest, demon... My wife's uncle, Jay, bought some land just north of Spokane, Washington, with a friend of the family that we're going to call Kay. They got it at a significant discount because a nearby aluminum smelter had polluted the ground and it was impossible to use the water beneath the ground. They had set up two plots and each had a camper to live in. Jay had been progressively getting paranoid and saying people were stalking him and watching him in the trees. About three months into living there, a man wandered through the woods and had an interaction with Jay and ended up attacking him and breaking his jaw. Upon being arrested, the man said that he was overcome with the desire to see if he could kill him with a single punch. Weird. Two months later... Jay was murdered in his sleep on the couch in his camper. 
Kay found him and immediately ran as far away until he stopped to call the police. There was sufficient evidence of who did it, and they quickly caught the killer, who was a 19-year-old boy who said he simply wanted his bike. He beat him to death with the power tool that was lying on the floor nearby, completely bashed his brains in. Kay was completely terrified at all times to be there alone. He had moved in with a family member until eight months later. He ended up with nowhere else to go and had to return. In constant fear, he finally convinced my pregnant wife and I to come stay with him. The second I turned off the highway onto the property, I was overcome with dread. There were at least 250 crows covering the dirt road up to the property. I didn't sleep whatsoever the first night. I stared into the forest, searching for the cause of my intense fear. The energy of this place was so uncomfortable, and I assumed it was simply just knowing Uncle Jay was killed here. Even the days were eerie. Never did I have a moment where I didn't feel watched here. My wife and I always had the sense of fear, especially after dark. Things sort of normalized for a while, until one day Kay began puking and feeling very lightheaded all the time. I took him to the hospital, and they said that he was fine, probably a flu. At this point, it was the anniversary of Jay's murder. Three days after the date of, of Jay's death, Kay comes running out of his camper, screaming. I can't breathe. Waking my wife, we just run up to see what's wrong. Kay had gotten into his car and floored it, crashing into a nearby tree. I run up and peer through the window to see the most intense and most primal fear I've ever seen in someone's eyes. He was gasping and clutching his chest. Moments later, he breathed out one last time, and he was dead. On July 10th, one year and three days after moving there, they were both dead. Now it's only me and the wife alone on the property. Every moment living in fear and not understanding what had happened here. I don't know why we didn't leave right away. One day I come out to get fresh water from a drum that we keep for water. To smell the worst smell I'd ever smelled. The water containing had a one inch opening on the top and inside the water was bits and pieces of chipmunks, like spines and heads. They didn't fall in. Something ripped them apart before putting them inside. The nights were getting worse and worse. I never saw anything, just always filled with unease, hearing crashing and footsteps every night. One night my wife and I returned home to having the worst feeling I've ever felt. Everything looked different, although everything was right where we had left it, nothing seemed in place. Looking around, I suddenly see this orange, long-haired, manged cat sitting on a stump. This cat's eyes were so intense, fiery, almost glowing, but not quite. We start hearing branches snapping, pine needles crunching, seemingly from every direction. I'm still staring at this cat, almost frozen in fear. Suddenly, a voice breaks out, echoing throughout the forest. Hello, is anyone out there? A little girl, I thought, but something was off. My wife yells back, Hello, are you okay? Anybody? The voice had changed. Help me! We yell back several times with no response. Somebody fucking help me! The most intense shrieking. Evil sounding. I'm filled with more intense fear than I can even describe, but my wife, she's overcome with the need to find this person. She started to head off into the forest without a word. I grabbed her by the arm and tell her something isn't right. Why won't she respond to us? She tries to break free for me to go off alone. I tell her to get into the truck and I'll grab the spotlights. We aren't going on foot. We rolled the windows down and shined my intensely bright flashlights throughout the forest. We slowly creep down the road yelling back. 
As we get further down the road, the voice strikes out. Please, won't anyone fucking help? Sounds are difficult to pin down in the woods, but this one was very close. I hit the brakes and stop immediately. We shine the lights and yell back searching. No sign of anyone. When suddenly, the voice explodes into the cabin of the vehicle as if they were standing right outside my window. Help me! Somebody fucking help! Leaving my ears hurting and ringing, I hit the gas and didn't look back. Called the police when I hit the highway. And afterwards, they said that there was no one around. I picked up our stuff the next day and my wife gave birth the following day. We never stayed there again after the baby was born. What the hell... What the hell could do these things? The fire or something else that burnt my house. So let me explain what happened. Even if I'm scared to have some answers, I'm going to ask for your help, because I need those answers. I had multiple encounters since the first memories I have. I can't tell everything in one post, sadly. Maybe I'll do other posts if you're interested in helping me because I'm also wondering if some of my encounters are maybe related to each other. Specifically this one. So I'll explain to you the best way I can what happened in the beginning of my childhood. My parents split when I was eight years old. My brother was four or five. Our house was burnt around two years before they broke up, and we were rebuilding a new house at the same place afterwards, like on top of the other burnt house that was no longer existing. I don't know if it can be related or not to some of my other encounters, but if so, it would make a lot of sense. And since it was a huge marking part of my childhood, I judged it to be pretty important to mention it at first. When the fire took place, my mom was home alone with my brother, around 1600 hours. My dad was still at work, and I was at my grandparents' house. I remember my dad calling me to tell me that the house was burning and me having almost no reaction. Somewhat normal for a six-year-old, I think. But I always and still have a weird feeling about the first house that burnt. I have chills just thinking about it, having no clear memory before the fire. Something was wrong in there, like very bad and dark. And I don't know what it was. I remember the dig after the fire to redo the foundation of the new house. And even then, I still had this weird feeling that weird feeling being there and looking into the big hole. So I was told by my mom and my dad that my mom accidentally started the fire emptying an ashtray into the garbage can in the basement, that maybe a cigarette was not fully extinguished and because the house was old as fuck, it burnt like a peck of matches. I don't know in what year the house was built. I'll have to check with my parents tomorrow and update the post. I kind of always doubted their explanations, even when I was six years old. What makes it weirder to me is that even if I asked my mother a hundred times if she ever encountered something before or after the fire, anywhere, anything, she always told me that she didn't want to talk or hear about paranormal stuff and prefer to not believe in it at all, which gives it power. I still told her many things that I experienced or witnessed since, but she always stopped me or put her hands on her ears, so never gone deep in what happened to me, which scared me even more. My dad always had an open mind, and still has, just not that much into paranormal stuff. He never doubted me when I talked to him about my encounters, but he didn't give me explanations or anything. He always told me that those things that we have no power of actions and that they just happen sometimes and that they're not dangerous because they can't reach us or hurt us because we're protected by our guardian angels. But each time I asked him about the fire, he always told me the same thing, that my mom caused it by accident. 
but he always had and have what seems to be a fear or sadness in his eyes. Just very weird. My dad's a strong and tall man, so out of habit for him to say the least. I never insisted further after his responses because I knew and know in my heart that it still's triggering him to this day. I know my mom would never intentionally set fire, set fire to the house. She's mentally totally fine. I think or I know that it's something else. I don't believe in the accidental fire because none of my parents were giving me stories enough to convince me. It always seemed to me that they were both keeping things for them. And I just always knew deep inside it was something else. I don't know if I'm an empath or what, but I know what I'm feeling and seeing. And some of these other people can't. I had a lot of encounters, but I'm still concerned about that house, the fire, and what caused it. The Smiling Woman my siblings and I seem to have all had experiences with the same spirit. My sister and I have only caught a glimpse, but my brother's gotten a good look many times. The spirit has a stereotypical horror movie look to it. It appears as a pale woman, average height, thin with long dark hair, down to at least her waist. Her hair is dirty, oily down to its ends so it almost looks wet. She wears a white dress or gown, also very dirty and yellowed. Her feet are dirty too. She seems to always appear barefoot. Her skin is sickly white and veiny. I also saw her once and got the impression that she was ill, like physically diseased. My brother's the only one of us who's seen her face. He says any time he's seen her, she's looking right at him, usually standing over him when he's laying down or looming behind him, smiling excessively, like she means to taunt him. He woke up to see her standing beside his bed most nights for a year or more. She says she made him too scared to move, that she was smiling but looked like she hated him. I think he said she whispered something to that effect to him before, but even saw her in the back seat of his car once and almost crashed. I've only seen her once in a dream. In the dream, I'm standing in the bedroom, and three of us had to share the small apartment that we moved into right after our parents divorced. It's dark in the room, but I can see the lamp in the living room is on, so I walk to it. Standing in the living room, I see that the light is on in the kitchen. The kitchen had a bar above the countertop and a row of cabinets drilled into the ceiling. So they made a long, narrow window. The woman was suspended in the air, lying flat like on a bed. The first thing I saw was her oily hair dangling. Then I noticed the backs of her arms and hands, her dress hanging from her the backs of her calves, and the dirty black heels of her feet. She was high enough off the ground that the upper cabinets blocked everything else. The dream had an uncomfortable feeling, like I had sort of wandered in and was seeing something I wasn't supposed to. I remember being afraid of her and wanting to leave before she noticed me. Then I woke up, and that was it. My brother and I were swapping ghost stories a few years later, and I told him about it. He'd never mentioned his experiences with the woman to me before that, and spilled it all after. I asked why he'd never brought her up, and he said seeing her made him feel crazy. He felt relieved when he heard that I saw her too. We called my sister up and asked if she'd ever seen anything in the many places that we'd lived in as kids making a point not to share what we had talked about. She eventually told us 
She'd seen the dark silhouette of a woman with long hair and light-colored dress one night. Watching her from the hallway of the apartment in my dream. The divorce apartment. She and my brother were both awake for their experiences. My sister experienced sleep paralysis for the first time in the divorce apartment. She never saw anything when this happened. Just felt something malevolent in the room with her. Her sleep paralysis continued on to my grandmother's apartment, who they moved in with after I got married and moved away. That's where and around the time my brother started seeing her. She tormented him for a long time. I didn't have my dream until some years after she stopped, and he hasn't seen her since. I think about it a lot and wonder sometimes where she is now. How long she followed us around. Why she was so bold and aggressive with my brother, but not my sister and I. And why she stopped. For my brother's sake, I'm glad that she did. Spirit in my apartment. But I'm the only one affected. So I had been staying at my boyfriend's apartment for several months before I officially moved in around the middle of May. Everything was fine and I felt no need to be nervous or scared. Then a couple of weeks later, weird stuff started happening. Everything started out pretty simple, with items moving to different places when they were gone for a bit. I just thought maybe I was crazy and forgot where I'd put the stuff. Then bowls falling in the kitchen. They'd fall so far, they'd end up in the hallway. A few minutes after a bowl would fall, my cat would stare at something a few feet away from me and hiss. She was genuinely terrified and was shaking. Then I started hearing the knocking. It's always in sets of threes, and it's always a pretty quick but consistent knock. It would happen randomly throughout the day, and was just in random walls or doors throughout the house. Yesterday, however, really freaked me out. My boyfriend convinced me that we had a mouse or something in the house, and I agreed. I had set a cup on the floor next to my bed, because we don't currently have a bedside table. I'm relaxing and I hear a noise like the cup being pushed. I thought it was the cat and I tried to ignore it. It happened again and again until I looked up and saw the cup moving across the floor on its own. As soon as I picked up the cup, I heard clothes falling in the closet and the three knocks on the closet door. I felt a pain in my chest, like someone was pushing hard, and I bolted out of the house. The problem here is that everyone thinks I'm crazy. It only ever happens when I'm alone in the house, or when I'm the only one awake. I tried using sage, that only seemed to make whatever it is more active. I'm at a loss for what to do and I hate feeling like I'm insane when I know what I'm seeing and hearing. I just don't know what to do at this point. Seeing figures in my room, what could it be? Anyways, I want to start off by saying that I find the paranormal super interesting and love to read through stuff, but I tend to be rather a skeptic, but I still think that I have experienced things. A little backstory. I have a vacation house in a small village in Italy where I spend most of my summers. We only have two bedrooms there, so I mostly share a bed with one person depending on who's accompanying me that year. I always get an uneasy feeling in that house, which I'll probably talk about in future posts. The story I want to talk about today started in 2017. That year, I flew to Italy with my grandparents and shared the bed with my grandma. At that time, I wasn't into the paranormal yet. Didn't even watch any horror movies. Long story short, I went to bed one night, 
and woke up at random times, but still had my eyes closed. I then opened them to check out what time it was on my phone, but right when I opened them, I saw a figure resembling a woman with short blonde hair. She wore a white tank top, and as corny as it sounds, she was almost a bit see-through. After a few seconds, I realized what I was looking at immediately jumped up and the figure was gone. I just brushed it off by saying that it was a bad dream. I didn't really think about what I saw long after. A few days later, I woke up again. I opened my eyes, but this time I didn't see the woman, but instead a young girl standing very close to me. This time I was so terrified that I turned around to wake up my grandma, and once I looked back, the kid was gone. I haven't experienced it since, which is why I didn't even think about it anymore. Three weeks ago, my parents, siblings, and me went back to Italy. My sister and brother slept on the bed together, my brother on the side where I would sleep in 2017, and I slept on a mattress on the floor. After the first night, my brother wouldn't step foot in the room anywhere. He slept with my parents the whole two weeks, even cried when he told my mom about what he saw. So, what did he see? A very tall, probably around seven foot tall man. He kept hovering over and around Eve, me, is what he said. I've not told my brother about what I saw a few years ago, because he was 13 and I didn't want to scare him. Does someone have any idea what all this could be about? Ghost Boy and Shadows at Our Old House When I was smaller, we lived in a typical suburban-type house with a pool and a very large yard. I wouldn't call the house haunted, but there were a few weird things going on that I'd like to share. This happened to me around the ages of 7 to 10 years of age, as we moved out to another town when I was 10. There were three activities that took place. From the living room, you could see out into the dining room. There was a three-seater couch that sort of defined the bounds of the two spaces. I initially thought my eyes were playing a trick, but occasionally while playing in the living room, I would notice a short boy walk past the couch. However, you would see nothing but only the top of his head. Think of Dennis the Menace haircut except his hair was more of a hazelnut color. I would see this boy walking past the couch at least weekly. It looked exactly like another person would. It was only some months later, when my mother was sitting with me in the living room, both staring out toward the dining room, that I noticed the boy's head walk past the couch and my mother reacting to it, and asked if I had seen a child walk past. That was when I told her that I see him fairly often, but I don't ever see him in any other part of him other than his head. She also admitted that she would see something from the corner of her eyes at times, but thought it was just her imagination. Later on, my brother, a year younger, also confirmed that he would see the boy. It was really weird, because it was just the top of his head you would see. You'd never see his eyes. You would never stop. He never ever called out to anyone or made a sound. Always just a head walking past the couch. I never felt any presence or anything weird. The second thing that would happen, which took place a couple of years, or a couple times a year, was when I would play outside, I would hear, call my name. It was more of a feminine voice. And it was like a loud whisper, but from the distance. This always happened when I was alone in the yard. It was definitely not my mother, as sometimes my mother was gone out shopping or at work. I always felt like I was being watched and that the air would become colder. This would happen even during the day, and it always happened outside of the house. I don't ever recall it taking place inside. 
the last thing that would happen is I saw shadows that moved. Shadow people, according to Reddit. Only some years later, I found out that my brother also regularly saw them. I once brought it up to my mother, who used to say that it's from watching too much television or just my mind playing tricks. Now the shadows were always out of the corner of my eyes. Like as soon as you try to focus on them, they would disappear around corners. Or if I was walking down the passageway and I'd turn around, I would see closer to me about a meter or so, but it would run away and disappear around the corner or behind a door. I felt as if I caught them red-handed, and they would scurry away as they were too afraid to be seen. It was always one shadow at a time, but I got the feeling that it was a different shadow being, not one constant one. They were slightly skinny, and I could never see the outline of any clothing items. I never saw shadows anywhere else except for that house. My brother was the only person to see them. My parents never did. I put that down to being kids or more sensitive to paranormal encounters. Woman called me by the esoteric name of a main character from a creative writing exercise with my therapist. It didn't mean much at first, but then I started taking it more seriously when my therapist suggested I do so. The main character is obviously a stand-in for myself, and in true fashion struggles with being surrounded by violence and being forced to elicit it on others to defend himself, other people, and appear tough. The main character's name is very specific. I chose the name because its meaning is very specific to my experience. It's Latin. And it's totally different from my name. It's no longer in circulation. If you met someone with this name, you'd think they're a fucking freak. There was a middle-aged woman at the local mart that I felt strangely drawn toward. I often felt safe around her which is important to me because I don't feel safe around a lot of people. We always had, and still have, brief, friendly interactions. I always enter my rewards phone card number, and every time I do, my real name pops up in the screen, which is typical in Western. She never called me by my first name, but I was a regular, as was my father. But one day she approached me out of the blue and was like, Your name's fill in the blank, right? And call me the name from the story. I got chills and felt my face get hot. I said no and introduced myself and she said, oh, my fault. Have a nice day. It's just so fucking eerie I still can't believe it myself. Like I said it's an old Latin word or a name and it's not only uncommon but just generally unheard of. I'm at a loss for words. The figure in the rear view. I'm a 34-year-old male. This happened to me and my brother when I was around 18 years old. He's 20 years old. Take it or leave it, we both know it to be true. We drove home at about 11 p.m. one night after visiting a friend on the other side of the town. We were sitting in my brother's car smoking a cigarette before we went inside. We lived in an old weatherboard house a straight driveway about 15 meters long. Across the other side of the road from our driveway, a 10-foot high brick fence had been freshly painted white, glaringly bright. The street we lived on was well lit, and we lived right next door to a Woolworths parking lot. House is 47 Smythe Street, Banala Victoria, Victoria, oh shit, <laughs> sorry. House is 47 Smythe Street, Banala, Victoria, Australia now vacant for a long time. As we sat there smoking, my brother says to me, take a look in the rear view. I grabbed the mirror and turned out, turned it toward myself, standing directly behind the car, just off the boundary of our driveway, was a solid black figure, perfectly contrasted against the white brick fence on the other side of the road. The figure looked to be a female with a jacket on and her hair looked wet. 
I turned around to look at the figure and there was nothing there. I spun back around the figure but was still standing there in the mirror, faced directly towards us. I spun around again to look with my own eyes and once again there was nothing there. I turned for a final time back to the mirror and the solid black figure was still standing there, pointed directly to us, not 15 meters away. At this point, every hair in my body stood on end and my mind went into a state of complete confusion, disbelief, and non-acceptance. I jumped out of the car and ran to the spot where the figure should have been. I ran to the fence that shared with the car park. The car park was empty. Nothing was on the street. Prior to my brother telling me to look, he had already done this triple take himself. House with an evil spirit. When I was 10, we had just moved into the nicest house we'd have ever been to that day. It was big, a huge sunken living room, bonus room off the kitchen, a great backyard. My parents rushed on buying it because it was such a good deal. Just a few days in, I saw a shadow figure that was about three feet tall, and it had a top hat of sorts. I'd catch it from the corner of my eye often, but especially near my brother's room. It seemed like it always was standing just in the doorway and would be quick to get out of sight. Pictures on the wall would sort of lean more and more throughout the day, and I often heard door creaks and footprints, but more like a galloping cadence coming from the attic. One night my dad and I were watching TV he was channel surfing and stopped on some show where people talked about their paranormal experience. I don't remember the show, but wish I did. Anyway, the person being interviewed mentions the shadow person that she's seeing, and it was exactly what I had been experiencing. Up until then, I didn't tell anyone because I didn't want to scare my younger siblings and my parents. We were kind of excited about the new house. I started to get really scared listening to it. So I told my dad about all I saw. He asked me where I saw it and other details, and I'll never forget how white he turned when he realized we both were seeing and hearing the same thing. He told me that he saw it every day since we moved in, and he always saw it near my brother's room. That night, I woke up in a panic from a dream, although it seemed more like a vision about the spirit hurting my brother and not a typical nightmare. I ran into my parents' room where my dad was sitting straight up in his bed, breathing fast. I told him about the dream, and before I could finish, he said, he was hurting Peter? And I said yes, but I wasn't sure because the shadow man just seemed to be next to the bed watching as my brother was being tended to by nurses. My dad had the exact same dream that same night. The following night, my mom was tucking us in, and I heard her panic as my brother was burning up, fever of 105, and was really weak and out of it. He got taken by an ambulance to the hospital, and we were told that he had pneumonia. He was sick for two weeks. We only went back to the house during the day to get our things. We moved in with my aunt temporarily and listed the house for sale. So would have I. My cat visited. Smiley face. My two-year-old boy passed away Thursday. He had a heart murmur that turned into CHF. Despite his illness, this was a kitty that loved to play, cuddle, explore, attack feet, and leave scars. He passed unexpectedly at the vet when I brought him in for an unrelated checkup. When he passed, I asked him to come visit me. I asked him to send me another kitty that was him when the time was right. I talk to him sometimes as if he were around and I'm a firm believer that he is. Although yesterday during the day, I felt heavily like my house was incomplete without a third kitty. I had a long ugly cry and looked at some pictures of him. His eyes stood out to me at how piercing they are. 
Cut to this morning. I'm in that odd state of between sleep and semi-consciousness. I'm dreaming that I'm walking toward my dresser when something urges me to look behind me, and there he was. Storm was in his sideways loaf position, and we immediately made eye contact. That's when I knew it was him, just like in my dreams of my grandma. He looked healthy and rounder. And like in the dreams of her, this felt so real. Unfortunately, that's where my dream ends as my mom's dog woke me up to let him in. I would have loved to spend some time with him, but it feels nice to know that he's around, to have a reminder that my house always does, in fact, have three kitties. My husband says not to go to the bathroom at night if the light doesn't turn on. So I live in a two-bedroom townhome. Not sure how long this place has been here, but I'm not sure if it's old enough for paranormal stuff, or if anything sinister has happened here. But I'd say at least 20 years old. We'd been here for a little over four years. We've had some incidents where our stairs give off a vibe, and my husband, who said that he's seen things, said there's an entity on our stairs. I'd say a couple years back when I saw something reflect on her TV in the living room facing the stairs, but I can't be sure what it was. Nothing has ever really happened. We have cats. They lay on the stairs and don't seem spooked. We also had children during their living here. And I've had dreams before where a dark entity tried to attack my children and I pushed it back. Like used some weird force shit. My daughter says weird shit sometimes also, like the window is scary and they don't like the lights off, but I've chalked it up to kids being kids who are scared of the dark. Last night, though, was weird as fuck. I've always used a light to get from our bedroom to the bathroom, or just turned the hallway light on, and the bathroom is right next to the stairs. I've always turned the light on the stairs, because, to be honest, it does freak me out a little bit for some reason like something watching me pee. But I also do it for the cats, because they have to go downstairs and eat and stuff. This time, though, I walked to my bathroom and turned the light on like always, except it didn't turn on. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, it could be a faulty switch or the light bulb burned out, except there's three light bulbs, and they all didn't turn on. I wasn't exactly afraid, but thought it was weird. So, I just went to pee and went to bed. Nothing happened. The next morning, the lights turn on. There was no blackout either, because the hall lights were all on too. Well, I told my husband, and he looked at me all serious. He said, next time that happens, go back to bed or go to the other bathroom downstairs and don't look out the window. There's a window in the upstairs bathroom because they didn't put a vent in the bathroom. He didn't explain what exactly the entity was. So I came on here to see if there's some sort of lore of an entity that shuts off lights or something and takes people. I don't know if that helps with the lore. I'd also like to add, I think something does follow me or watch me sometimes. I get weird feelings at night. One time I used one of those heat and ghost fighting app things that show you a trail or something. The whole screen filled up, which meant it was right on me. I get that feeling now, but I'm not super paranoid as a person. I'd be more likely to tell people to stop the shit before hiding under the covers and being scared. My husband and his mom, she's a witch but not sure what kind, say they're seeing things. Now in her house, I've smelt strange things, which my husband says is a native. My nose and the instincts pick up on things, but not my sight. No smells in my own home, just flickers of things. I guess my question is, what the heck am I dealing with? I don't think it's hostile, just curious. Though my husband says don't interact, I'm still going to pee in my own bathroom. Ain't no way I'm going downstairs.
Maybe we should listen to our elders more. My mom mentioned that she had very few minor supernatural experiences, but one incident stood out in particular. For those who may not be familiar with the Philippines, it's important to know that Filipinos tend to be very superstitious, especially in the more rural areas, or provincia in Filipino, as compared to larger cities like Manila. My mom lived a tough life. Her dad was a deadbeat who abandoned my mom, my grandmother, and her siblings. Consequently, my grandmother raised them single-handedly. Good job. During her, turn her teenage years, a neighbor from the house next door passed away, and my mom's family was invited to the wake. An elderly woman at the wake issued a series of rules to my mom and her family. One, don't bring home food from the wake. Two, if you or a friend visiting are pregnant, don't look inside the coffin. Three, before leaving the wake, perform a pog pog, which involves shaking and jumping up and down to prevent the spirit from following you home. Four, after the wake, avoid returning home immediately. Go somewhere else for a while so the spirit doesn't follow you. Though my mom and grandmother weren't superstitious people, they didn't take these rules seriously and returned home after just two hours at the wake, breaking one of the rules. That night, my mom had nightmares about the deceased Tita and woke up in the early morning, around 4 or 5.30 a.m., not 3. When she went to get a glass of water in the small kitchen, she saw someone standing outside the door frame resembling the deceased Tita. Frightened, she rushed back to the room where they all slept together, as their house had only one room. She shared what she saw with my grandmother, who checked around the house but found no one. The next day, an albularo, a type of folk doctor who deals with supernatural matters, came to their house. The albulario was whispering around doing something related to the supernatural. Later that night, the elderly lady who had issued the rules came to their house and expressed her anger at my grandmother for breaking the rules. According to her, the spirit of the deceased neighbor had followed them home due to this disrespect, and it was essential to always follow the rules. This experience made my mom wonder whether there might be some truth to the superstitions the elderly share with us as kids and that they aren't merely meant to scare us into obedience. And no matter how silly these superstitions sound, that maybe, just maybe, there's some truth to them. I also asked my grandmother about this incident over the phone, and she confirmed that it did indeed happen. She went to the neighbor's house the following day and informed them about what had occurred with my mom. Upon hearing the details, the neighbors promptly called an albulario to perform a ritual or prayer. And that was at their house, hopefully to help the spirit move on.